Hello and welcome to our first video in Chapter 2, Units of Measurement. In this video we'll be looking at units that we're going to be seeing throughout this course. We will be primarily sticking with the metric system. Uh, metric system is sometimes called the SI for System International Units. Uh, this is a governing body that, that uh, talks about how scientists are supposed to handle units. In this course, all numbers must have units. There's going to be very few exceptions to that rule, and I'll let you know when they happen. If you forget to put units on numbers in either data or calculations, you will lose points off of your lab or your test or quiz or even your homework. Base units are units that represent some direct measurement, and we're familiar with many of these base units. For example, meter is the base unit uh, for distance, and we're familiar with the meter, hopefully. Kilogram is the base unit for mass. Now, you notice kilo has this prefix in. We don't use the gram because the kilogram is larger and easier to standardize, and there actually is a standard kilogram mass uh, that we everybody uses to calibrate. Kelvin is a unit for temperature. It's related to Celsius, but Kelvin is an absolute scale, which means it starts at zero. The size of the degrees are the same. They just have different zeros. We'll be using Celsius more often in the class, but we will talk about Kelvin and how it relates to Celsius later on. And finally, the base unit for time is the second. Now, from base units, we get derived units. Derived units are a combination of two or more base units or other derived units as well. The unit for volume, the liter, for example, volume is a derived unit. Essentially, it's based on, if you recall, length times width times height. So length is centimeters, if you think about one type of length, centimeters and centimeters. And when we take the three of them and multiply them together, it's just like cubing something. So we have centimeters cubed. And centimeters cubed is a value, is a unit for volume. Now, it's related to the liter by relating it to the milliliter. And this is a special equivalence that I have that one milliliter is one cubic centimeter or one centimeter cubed and this is so special I actually have it on your reference pack so you can always remember how to use it. Essentially milliliters are used for liquids and cubic centimeters are used for solids so that'll help us to distinguish between them. Another important derived unit is speed. It's distance over time. It's a rate which is just a change in something over time. We'll look at reaction rates later on in the year. And we can calculate it by just taking the distance. So this car is traveling 89.8 .8 meters in 3.24 seconds. How fast did it go? We put the, the uh, distance on the top and the speed the uh, time on the bottom. And then we do the math. So we get 2.77. Now, this is meters over seconds. This kind of a unit turns into these per units. We'll talk more about them later on, meters Per second. Another important derived unit is the density. Density is the mass divided by the volume. It indicates how tightly packed matter is together. So if we have uh, a, an aluminum sample with a mass of 82.5 grams and it has a volume of 30.44 cubic centimeters, what is its density? As before, we're going to put the, the mass on top the volume on the bottom as the equation tells us and we're going to get a density of 2.71 and again the units grams per centimeter cubed is the unit for density. Notice that when I want to calculate a value I put the value or a symbol for it as what I'm going to calculate not X because X is an unknown quantity that doesn't really mean anything to us in chemistry. Um, there's going to be some uh, occasion where we're going to need to find the volume of a particular sample and this can be done by what's called water displacement. We're going to do this in our lab and there will be some problems on this in our worksheet as well. In our water displacement, what we do is we start off with a certain volume of water in this graduated cylinder. We put a solid sample into the graduated cylinder and it raises the volume of the water and we measure the volume of the sample by measuring the difference between the final volume of the water and the initial volume of the water. So here's how that works. So suppose we have a sample of iron, 63.4 grams. It starts off in the graduated cylinder. Water has a volume of 12.51 milliliters. When you put the iron in, 
it goes up to 20.57 milliliters. Now we're going to remember also that one milliliter is one cubic centimeter. First thing we do is find the volume of the iron, subtract the initial volume from the final volume. We get 8.06 milliliters or a volume of 8.06 cubic centimeters. We're now going to plug this and the mass into the density equation. 63.4 grams divided by 8.06 cubic centimeters and we get the density for iron of 7.87 grams per cubic centimeter. Now with the density equation with other equations like this you can rearrange them to find uh, to solve for one of the other variables and most efficient to rearrange before plugging in the numbers and then you can rearrange after uh, you rearrange to find the mass or the volume for instance, if you know the density and one of the other things. Starting with the density equation, if I want to dis if I want to calculate the mass, I want to get mass by itself, so I'm going to multiply both sides through by volume, put the volume up on here, and we get volume is equal to, I'm sorry, mass is equal to density times the volume. If I wanted to calculate the volume, and I know the density and the mass, then what I'm going to do is there's a little bit of a trick for solving for the denominator. I want to solve for the denominator. I don't know this value. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the denominator and the what looks like the thing I'm solving for in the, uh, the equation, I'm going to switch them and I'm going to get the volume is equal to the mass divided by the density. And a little algebra will get you there and I can show you how to do that if you'd like. So a couple of quick calculations. What is the mass of a copper penny if its density is 8.96 grams per cubic centimeter and its volume is 0.346 cubic centimeters? We're going to use the first equation here, density times volume. So the mass is equal to density times volume. The cubic centimeters cancel out because one is on in the numerator, one's in the denominator, and leaves us with grams. 3.10 grams is our answer. For the next equation, if we want to solve for the volume, so now we're going to solve for the volume here. We know the mass and the density, mass of 132.8 grams for this gold nugget, density of 19.3 grams per cubic centimeter. Plug things in, we have the mass, the volume is equal to the mass over the density. In this case, the grams cancel, and another algebra trick, the cubic centimeters is the denominator in the denominator, that comes up to the numerator, and that gives us a value of 6.88 cubic centimeters as the unit. All right, lastly, let's take a quick look at symmetric prefixes. We use these to make very large or small numbers easier to handle. Most commonly, we're going to use kilo, means 1,000 kilograms is 1,000 grams, kilometers is 1,000 meters. Centi means 1 one hundredth, or, or there's 100 per base unit, so a centimeter is 1 one hundredth of a meter, and there's 100 centimeters in a meter. Milli is one one thousandth. There's one uh, one one thousandth of a meter in a millimeter, or there's a thousand milliliters in a meter. And another common one we'll end up using is nano, or ten to the minus nine. So these are all listed on the conversion chart that you have on chart chart A in your reference package, and we'll learn how to use these conversion charts next week. And you can see I highlighted the four most important ones here. So next video is going to be on scientific notation. Please listen to it as you read through the notes.